Hi, I'm Charlotte Smith here with Blaine Online. Thanks for joining me. I have Pastor Reverend David Foster. Um, and can you introduce yourself? I am the Association of Mission Strategist for Bladen Association. Okay. We're a resource center. Um, Bladen Baptist Association has no authority over any of our churches. We're simply a resource to help churches do ministry, missions, minister to the community. Um, you know, get information to them from the state convention, those kind of things, resources. During COVID-19, have you had a lot of people coming into the office seeking resources? Well, since the stay-at-home order came in place, we haven't been in the office. Mm -hmm. We would traditionally have people come by most, most times, most days during the week needing some assistance with things, but since we've been shut down, that's changed. But we have had some folks to call in with ramp builds. We um, we do many ramp builds. Okay. We've slowed down through this time, but we actually build a ramp today, and we've got a ramp repair tomorrow. So we're still doing those things for those that need it, where the need's pretty immediate. The lady that needed the ramp that we built today um, has cancer, going through treatments. She had a blood clot, so she really was not able to get in and out of her house walking. So. This ramp today would be able to help. So we're still doing those kind of ministries. Okay. So, and where where are those ramps being built? Are they in Elizabethtown, Bladenboro? What, any, any part of Bladenboro. All throughout County. Bladen County? Yeah, this one today was at White Lake. Tomorrow there's a ramp repair in Bladenboro. So anywhere in the county. Okay. Uh, we have some teams from our churches. Mm -hmm. Three or four churches have teams that will go out and, and build the ramps. Okay. So. So if someone seeking those uh, resources, do they contact their church or do they contact the office? We call the association. Oh, call the association. Okay. And have you heard of any uh, anybody needing uh, like spiritual help because of the the stress and anxiety that COVID nineteen the coronavirus outbreaks caused? No. Um... We haven't because there's such a disconnect with, with people communicating. You know, folks were supposed to stay at home, so those that I'm sure are having um, struggles in those areas aren't able to get in touch with anyone or don't ha aren't in contact unless it's unless they may call. And sometimes it's hard for them to do. But I do think there's a lot of spiritual um, counseling and ministry going on just through our normal Sunday morning services that our pastors are providing. Um, the churches have had to really get creative with how they do worship and how they stay connected with the community during this time. Many pastors are doing Facebook Live. Um, some churches are even having their Sunday school live streamed through Facebook, which is real creative. Um, one church has a, um, and, and it's through mostly a YouTube, but they'll do s different sections, and they're even having a children's sermon. Oh. You know, so they'll have a children's sermon, they'll have different um, people in the church doing YouTube things you know, for worship and music, and then they'll have a message, and then that's all put together on, on um, an email where you go to their Facebook page, and it's kind of all in order, and you can follow that, and different people are taking part in the service. Um, pastors are doing, and, and other church leaders are doing Sunday night discipleship training, Sunday night worship. So the churches are trying to maintain some kind of normalcy with the way they do worship. Um, it, it's it's and interesting to me that it's been a it's forced our church to get out of the building. And my big belief as a association mission strategist is we got to get out in the community. We, we're not we're not made to stay in our buildings. So this pandemic has caused us to step outside of our buildings because some churches are having drive on worship. Right. And that's worked well. Um, it's allowed churches to have opportunities for the church members to come and see one another at a distance in their cars. Uh, no one gets out, and no one comes up to the cars, but they can see each other, and, and, and it does seem to bring that sense of community back together. Um, have you been to one of those I have. services? I have. Okay. Yeah, and it's, it works well. Um, everybody's following the guidelines. There seems to be an energy and excitement about it. In fact, most of the pastors I've talked to have, have they've told me that um, some folks have come to the services that were not members of the church. Mm -hmm. There are some folks that show up that were members but have not attended for years, but they come back and sit in the parking lot in their cars. Now, one pastor told me that the first Sunday they did it, they noticed that neighbors across the street from the church that had never been to the church came out on their porch 
and sit on the porch during the Sunday morning worship service. So the gospel is getting out into the community, even with the drive up and with the Facebook Live. Um, pastors are getting many, many views 500, 1,000, 2,000 views when they never would have had that much of an opportunity within their in their church or their church community to reach. So the gospel is getting out um, maybe farther than before. And I hope that when, when we're able to come back together and worship in a church, that the folks will really appreciate the opportunity to do that. And we'll see a bigger um, interest when things are safe <laughs> to come back together and really have corporate worship because that's important to the church and the community. So, have you heard of any churches having issues with law enforcement not allowing them to worship, like your, your drive-up um, services or anything like that? I called the governor's office um, when the order, stay-at-home order was put in place. Well, Governor Cooper? Find, Governor Cooper's go, the governor's office mm -hmm. to find out just what their um, guidelines were about drive-up church. Because I really wanted to make sure that, that we were doing what was in line with his order. And after being on hold for hours, I finally got through and asked them. They said drive up church is, is fine as long as people stay in their cars. Um, if they stay the six foot distance, even between you know the passenger window and the driver's window, so they can you know, just make sure they keep that distance. And um, do not pick anyone up driving to church. Every vehicle has to have the homeowners in the vehicle, no one else. And they said as long as they do that, um, then it should be fine. The local sheriff offices are the ones that would enforce those orders. Mm -hmm. So I talked to Sheriff McVicker and he said, David, we're not going to come to the churches on Sunday morning and police anything. He said, if we don't hear of any complaints, he said, we're not going to be bothered by that. He said, because I think most people will follow what they say. And the churches all follow those guidelines. And they found creative ways to take up the offering, a bucket at the exit as people leave. They can simply roll down the windows and drop them off an envelope and they're tied into the bucket and go on. So they're, they're maintaining that social distancing. Um, one church was not allowed to have, actually two, one, Camp Clearwater has a chapel service every Sunday morning and their pastor lives in Goldsboro. So when White Lake was shut down for anyone that's outside of that area that did not have a permanent resident at White Lake that was not able to come, he was no longer able to come into White Lake and leave the service. So that kind of ended their worship. Well, on Easter Sunday, the Lake Church wanted to have worship, and they were preparing for it, but the police came over and said, no, we can't, you guys can't have worship. Camp Clearwater can't have worship, so it wouldn't be right if you guys were able to have worship, but they can't. So it was a mayor's decision that he said was best for the community um, at that time if we didn't have drive-up service. So we'll see what happens in the days ahead. If anything is extended, I'm hoping we will be able to come back together. And, and because it is important to see each other mm -hmm. and it does make a difference so. so it's just in white lake are other churches in white lake meeting or there's no churches in white lake meeting there, that you there's know no of? other church in white lake that mm -hmm. meets. Uh, white lake baptist church is outside of the city limits so they and they have had drive up church mm -hmm. um, as well as doing facebook live Okay. So those are the only two churches, Chapel and the Lake Church, that were affected by that decision that White Lake mm -hmm. Mayor and Commissioner made. Okay. Um, many other churches in the county are doing drive-up church and have really good stories about what, what's happening. They, they seem encouraged by it. So it's been challenging, but it's been received well. Um, in fact, I think some of the churches have actually had higher attendance on Sunday morning since they've had drive-up church than they had hmm. when folks were able to go into the sanctuary, which is encouraging because maybe those people stay and once we're able to get back into the sanctuaries, those people have come and attend. And, and again, hopefully, Charlotte, I really hope that this helps us um, see the need to get out in the community with the gospel, that it's not just about us and our church and have the ability to have worship. In fact, one of my concerns when all this came about is I heard people calling up and saying, well, we can't go to church. We're upset that we can't go to church. Well, I think we should be less concerned about going to church and be the church mm -hmm. in the community. So I think that's happening. Have there been, a, has there been a decrease in giving to uh, the association or to the churches? Have you seen a, a decrease or Most an increase? Most of the pastors have, have um, been really encouraging that, that the money's coming in. And I think that 
faithful tithers that are in our churches are going to continue to give because they know it's important because it's a command by the Lord for them personally, but also the need for the church. So I think for the church, it's been pretty good. Now for the association, I can't say the same. Um, and I think that's because the church clerks are not, not in the office. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that as, as the, the shutdown ends and, and people are able to get back to work, that we'll see our, our, our offerings, our giving increase because we, we are in need. Right. Are. I to know do the resources that we have, it, it's, mm -hmm. it, it, it's an expense. You guys provide uh, the ramps, right. and I know that if someone's house burns down, I think there has been, there's been residents in Blaine County who actually recently had their homes burned. So I don't know if they've, they've been here or not, but I know that you guys have funds for that as well. Do you got, what are you using your funds for now? What kind of ministries do you have coming up that might be affected by COVID-19? Well, just general resources for the for the community, for the, the churches. Um, we don't have, uh, most of our budget is the, the, the staff and the, the building. Um, mm -hmm. Ramps require quite, quite a bit. Um, I, I can't call them off. We got... Um, what about that ministry that you guys do at the lake? The, you know, we have a leisure ministry that, that goes for um, from Labor Day weekend, Memorial Day weekend through Labor Day weekend. And I hope we can have it this year. There are five campgrounds around White Lake. Um, and it's a 30 minute devotional at nine o'clock to 9.30. And, um, we've had good response with that. And um, it's, a good, it's a good opportunity because a lot of the people that come for vacation may not come ready to go to a church service somewhere, but they can come out to the campground that they are, are at and they can have service there. Um, and that's going well. That's kind of a self-supporting ministry people give. We have an offering all box in case anybody wants to give, and, and it doesn't cost a lot for that ministry. Um, so the, the ramp building, uh, the feeding ministry that goes on through Second Chance Community Church is something that's, that's taking place every Tuesday. And I think lately they've fed 150 people, mostly 150 plates have been prepared and sent out to the community. So they're still feeding? They're feeding every Tuesday at, at uh, 11 o'clock. And it's drive up, you know, they're not, no one's going inside the building. You drive up, you tell how many plates you need, and they'll they'll give you the number of plates. The plates are pre-prepared. Pre the, the food's cooked on site. The plates are prepared and then given out to those that come up. And then some plates, the, the church, Second Chance Community Church, knows the ones in the community that have needs that can't maybe come to mm -hmm. pick the food up and they'll have someone take the van and go out and distribute the food. So well, it's been a good program, been a, been a very important ministry during this time. Now for those that want to help, that have the means to help, how would you suggest them help at this time? They, I can give my cell phone number, they can call me and there, there are many opportunities for both just giving some funds and help or if, if people want to help do some ramp building and if you're not skilled at that you want to learn it's an easy thing to do and we'd love to be able to teach you and maybe you could go and provide that ministry somewhere else um, our, the Baptist men through our state convention have asked um, churches to volunteer to, to open up like a cook uh, kitchen site at their facility when they find out their needs in the community and Many of our churches have volunteered for that, but no one's, we haven't been given any names yet that, that have this particular need. They're probably out there. And that's another hard thing about this, this virus, this, this situation we're in. It, it's hard to get in touch with people if you can't go see them. Mm -hmm. And you don't know who to call. Most of the people that are able to come to the church you know, may don't have the opportunity necessarily to tell what the needs are if they know them. They're staying home, so they probably don't know some of the needs that are out there. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure there are people that are kind of falling through the cracks that we're missing. And I really hope we can figure out how we can find who those people are. Because yeah. we have some churches that are willing to, to cook some food and distribute the food to these individuals if you know who they are. And so could people email you or they just call you? Or? Email. My email address is dtfoster1961 at yahoo.com. My cell phone number is 252-532-5977. And either way. Well, thank you for your time. Sure. Thank you.